Hey Indie Mogulers, Griffin here. Today I want to share three easy math tricks that I think every filmmaker or cinematographer should know. And the first is, let's memorize the f-stop scale. This is important. Right now I am shooting this at f2.8 on both of my cameras. And I know, for example, that f2.8 as an aperture is exactly four times brighter than f5.6. How do I know this? Well, I know that every stop is a doubling of light in photography. And if you know the primary f-stop scale, then you know that f2.8 is two stops away from f5.6. And the easy way to know this, to, to know the scale, to memorize it, is just to memorize the two numbers, 1 and 1.4. That's f1, f1.4. If you know those two numbers, you know the rest, and I'll show you how. And if you really can't remember those two numbers, maybe you can remember that the square root of one equals one, the square root of two equals 1.4, and so forth. If we just take those two numbers, f1 and f1.4, and we double each of them, times two, times two, now we get two and 2.8. Those are the next two stops on the scale. And if I double those two numbers, I get four, and 5.6, and keep going. 8, 11, 16, 22, 32. These are each a stop along the scale, meaning every time I adjust my lens from 2 to 2.8, I'm cutting the light in half. From 2.8 to 4, I'm cutting it in half again. So that's why this is useful to know. Now, some people ask me, wait, is f11, that's not exactly 5.6 times 2, wouldn't that be 11.2? Well, yeah, if you really want to get technical, the square root of 2 is actually 1.414. And so this is 2.828. This is 5.657, 11.314. But you don't need to know all that. The other thing is your camera will do third stops. When you're actually dialing in the aperture, It before it gets to 1.4, it might say, 1.1, then 1.2, then 1.4, then 1.6, 1.8, then two. Now, I don't think you need to memorize all the third stops to understand this, because even just knowing the primary stops along the scale is super useful. For example, I am using a three-stop ND filter right now. And if I'm at f2.8 using a three-stop filter, if I were to take off the filter, I would need to close down my aperture to one, two, three, to f8, because that's eight times darker than f2.8. Next up is shutter angle. And I feel like most camera operators these days understand the 180 degree shutter rule. That's because our cameras have made it pretty easy to dial it in exactly where we need it. All you need to know is that 180 degrees is half of a circle. And half is the important word here because 180 degrees is considered a normal shutter angle. So. For most of your productions, you want to set your shutter speed to be half of your frame rate. So if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, then you want your shutter to be 1 60th of a second. If you're shooting at 24 frames per second, that's cinematic frame rate, then you want to set it to 1 48, or as close as you can get to that. Of course, many cameras have made this easy. You don't even need to know the math. You don't have to know the number of seconds for your shutter speed. You can just dial, you know, my camera, for example, I can just set it to 180 degrees and it'll do the math for me. If I'm in 30 frames per second, it'll set the shutter to 1 60th of a second. But I can also change that number for creative effect. Let's say we cut this circle down to 1 8th of the total pi, just 45 degrees. That'll give me four times darker exposure, but also much sharper movement. Likewise, I could open up my shutter to the full 360 degrees, which would mean that my shutter speed is equal to my frame rate. If I'm shooting 30 frames a second, I could shoot a 1 30th per second shutter, and that would give me my maximum exposure and maximum motion blur. So why is 180 degree shutter considered normal? Well, the first motion picture cameras had a rotary shutter spinning inside. It actually kind of looks like this little thing. It's a semicircle that would cover up the film for half of each frame. And we got accustomed to that level of motion blur. It just looks cinematic. Today's final lesson is about avoiding flicker. Last week I was filming in Singapore, and if you've ever shot outside of your home country, you may have encountered this. 
lights that flicker. In fact, lights around us are flickering all the time. You definitely see it when you shoot slow motion. But usually, these lights are perfectly in sync with our cameras. How is that even possible? Well, in the United States, when you plug in a light to AC power, alternating current, the power runs on a 60 hertz cycle. That means that the power does this, a sine curve. And it does that 60 times per second. So we could just keep drawing that out. What this is, is that the power pushes up and then it drops and then it pushes up again, but in the opposite direction and then up again, more power, more power, more power, more power. What this means is that the electricity is pulsing in one direction and then the other direction back and forth. So it's actually hitting its max power twice in every cycle, just in two different directions. So if each one of these is a cycle and it's doing this exactly 120 times a second, what this means is that if I'm shooting at 30 frames per second, I'm gonna capture exactly four of these peaks in every frame. So the lighting will be consistent. And really, no matter how I cut it, as long as I'm shooting 30 frames a second or 60 frames a second, this is gonna work out perfectly for me. The problem is when this is actually a 50 cycle hertz. In many other countries, including Singapore, the power runs on a 50 cycle hertz. So these peaks are actually happening 50 times a second or 100 times, 100 of these peaks every second. So if I come in here and try to shoot with my 30 frame per second frame rate, instead of getting four of these perfect peaks in every frame, now I'm gonna be landing in some weird places. Like now my 30 FPS brings me from here to here, and then from here to here. And now there's just like, what is this? Like one, two, three and a third peaks is happening in every frame. And so we're, we're getting different fluctuations in every single frame. That's what causes the flicker. So you might think you just have to adjust your frame rate. You have to shoot in 25 frames per second or 50 frames per second to match this lighting situation. But you don't. You don't have to change your frame rate if you change your shutter speed. As long as one of those two things is in sync with the lighting, your frames or your shutter, you're all good. So I can keep this 30 FPS, but instead of setting my shutter speed to 1 60th, which would put me at almost a full curve, I could set my shutter speed to 1 50th and capture an entire sine curve in one frame, and then I'm not exposing during this time. And then I do another 50 shutter. And it feels weird because I'm out of sync now with that curve, but I'm still capturing, I'm starting the curve and ending the curve at the same moment. So as long as every frame I'm dropping in and I'm only picking up 1 50th of a second, I'm gonna have the same amount of exposure from the lighting flickering in every frame. And it works out. So all you need to know is that if you're shooting in a 50 hertz country, you need to use a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second or a shutter speed of 1 100th of a second. And likewise, if you're coming from a 50 hertz country and you're shooting in the United States or another 60 hertz country, you need to pick a shutter speed that's 1 30th of a second or 1 60th of a second. As long as you do those things, you shouldn't have a problem with lighting. Well, that does it for today's math lesson for filmmakers. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you picked up something today. And if you like to learn, you might enjoy my five hour class on shooting short documentary films. You can find it at griffinhammond.com slash class. And let me know in the comments today if you have any questions about other math issues that are plaguing you as a filmmaker. I'll try to help out, and if I can't answer it, I bet one of the super smart indie mogulers in our comment section can also help.